ladies and gentlemen, thrill six of all ages, I am the C-H-A-L-L, Doncaster born, but built for theme parks, and welcome to a theme park trip preview. Yes, it's confirmed. It is confirmed. I'm going to Flamingoland. Now, this is the day after the launch of the 10 looping roller coaster, but I'm still going to give you my first thoughts on Sick, the brand new 10 looping roller coaster. Now, Please do like, comment, subscribe, click that case bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Do all that good stuff in the description down below. Social media links, Google Forms link for, you, for your video ideas, etc. And for now, let's give you, first of all, a bit of history for those of you who don't know much about the park itself. So Flamingo Land is a theme park, zoo and resort located in Kirby Miss Purton in North Yorkshire, England. It opened in 1959, it's been owned and operated by the Gibb family since 1978. Now, it was established back in 1959 when the cinema entrepreneur Edwin Petland Hick sold the cinema chain and used the funds to purchase a bankrupt country club and use the land for a zoo, initially called the Yorkshire Zoological Gardens, with a colony of flamingos amongst the first animals to be housed on the site. You sort of see where the name comes from. Now, in 1968, the park purchased a killer whale from Seattle and they brought in loads of other animals. Um, but obviously back in the 70s, amusement rides became a permanent fixture of the park along with the zoo, becoming the first site in Europe to combine these attractions in one location. So this, the, this is the first site in Europe to combine amusement rides and zoo in one location back in the 70s. This is the first one to do it in Europe. The park was losing money by 1974 and it underwent a revamp na renamed Flamingo Land with more emphasis placed on the day out experience. The owners, Scottia Leisure Limited at the time, sold the site in 1978 to Robert Gibb and he put his team in place to develop the complex as a national rather than local tourist attraction, including investment in different rides and attractions. Now, of course, there is loads of different attractions uh, at this park, none more so than the brand new roller coaster for this year, Sick, the multi-inversion coaster, the second generation roller coaster. Now, of course, in terms of the attractions itself, the attractions itself have a very, very very uh, rich history. So we're going to go coaster order for the oldest operating roller coasters. We're going to focus on the coasters, then go to other attractions as well. So starting off in 1988, the park opened the Dino Roller, of course known as Dragon Coaster up until 2012, and then it became known as Dino Roller as part of the whole sort of um, prehistoric area to go with the pterodactyl attraction. Now Dino Roller is a Super Nessie Junior coaster manufactured by Cavaza Diego. Now of course um, around the 1990 mark the park invested in Go Gator and sometime between 2002 and 2008 according to Roller Coaster Database this power coaster was moved about 140 feet west of the site a building named starting with Explorato once was. Then between 2008 and 2015 it was moved north between Midway and the car park and it's on its current site where it sits for the last few years now after the go gator the next coaster in line was back in 2005 when the vacoma custom motorbike coaster velocity came to the park now of course just a year later in 2006 a 671 meter shenlin Vacoma SLC model, suspended looping coaster model, was brought in. Now there's only two of these. Uh, the other one is Snow Mountain Flying Dragon at Happy Valley in Guangdong, China, in a place called Shenzhen in Guangdong, China. Now, along with Kumali uh, in 2006, just three years later, they brought in Mumbo Jumbo. Now this was the SNS El Loco roller coaster. Uh, now this is uh, at a cost of four million pounds, designed by Alan Chilkey, Black Track, Orange Supports, two inversions, four Gs, and it took the record of Saw the Ride for a time for the steepest drop in the world. So uh, a very co cool looking record there. Now in 2011, the park brought in Zoom, a Zampella Air Force attraction. Uh, this was the sort of, it's sort of like a swinging, a slow moving swinging coaster basically. Uh, it, it looked like one of those old Vacoma swingers with the, the with the big trains, but it's very, it's very much a slow moving 
Caribbean Kids Family Coaster. Now, just a couple of years later, in 2013, they invest in two brand new roller coasters. They invest in Twistosaurus, which is of course their junior Zamperla Twister Coaster, uh, and they also invest in Hero, a Zamperla Volair Flying Coaster, the 391 meter model, which is the same as uh, Flying Coaster from the relocated LH Gardens. Um, you've also got Superfly at Playland Park, it's the same as Trombi at Sock and Yemi, uh, Time Warp at Canada's Wonderland, uh, Voller, his Kazagi at Wonderland Eurasia. So there's a few of these models out there since 2002. Uh, now, of course, you've also got the Runway Mine Train, which is a Zamperla family gravity coaster, the ATSTD model. Uh, now, this model in particular. Uh, there's about 46 of these, six relocated. Just give you a few names, for example, uh, Dragon, uh, Dragon's Apprentice at Legoland Parks in New York, Japan and Dubai. Got the Dragon Barn at Spiel Park, Oud uh, You've also got Grand Expedition Coaster at Silver Dollar City, Great Chase at Six Flags America. Uh, you've got the Mini Mine Rush, which is relocated from the American Adventure Theme Park, which actually became the Runaway Mine Train at Flamingo Land. Of course, it started off as the Runaway Train at Gulliver's Warrington from 2004 to 2005, then the Mini Ru Mine Rush, then it was the Runaway Mine Train from 2007 to 2019 uh, at Flamingo Land, and then it's been put in its newer location since 2020 to make space for the new coaster at Flamingo Land. So the new coaster at Flamingo Land, uh, as you all already know, we've done loads of content on this, it is sick. Uh, this is the 10 inversion Rev B model, and this got a very interesting history indeed. Now, this has been in storage for a few years between 2012 and 2017 at Hopi Hari in Brazil. Uh, it was supposed to be built there but never operated due to financing reasons. It stayed on storage from 2017 to 2019 at Movie Animation Park Studios in Malaysia. Uh, and then from there, it came over to Flamingo Land to be built over the next couple of years. Of course, COVID-19 played a big part in the delaying of the attraction. Now, obviously, that's going to be one of the main reasons for checking out this park again. It's going to be my first visit to Flamingo Land in six years on the, on the day. So it's going to be very, very weird to come back after six years. Think about it. The last time I was there, it was pre-COVID-19. It was before COVID-19. So this is the first time checking out the changes around the park, see if Hero rides any better than last time, and of course checking out the brand new ride which opens on the day before my visit. Of course, you, you, Ro Dogster Rovers fans, you know why I'm not going on the launch day because of the first pre-season game, but I will be there on the Sunday for the day after the launch. So it's going to be very, very exciting indeed. Now, of course, going away from the um, the roller coasters. You've also got some big thrill rides in the in the park as well. Now, in terms of non roller coaster thrill rides, you've got Cliffhanger, which is your SNS uh, Worldwide Tower. There was rumours that that was going to go a couple of years back to the now shelved plans for the Scarborough. Uh, Flamingo Land Park, that kind of thing. Uh, of course, Cliffhanger is now here to stay, for now at least. You've got Navigator, which is Ampel the Disco Ride. Not the one with the airtime hill, but just the normal curve one. You've got Flip Flop, which is a Fabry Swing Ride over the lake. Uh, you've also got Pterodactyl, which is your Zampella Vertical Swing. Fun fact, there was a rumour it was going to be called the Chinese Puzzle Tree before Pterodactyl was officially named in 2012. Uh, you've got Water Rides, like Splash Battle. You've got the Lost River Ride. Uh, you've also got Voodoo, which is a pirate ship attraction. You've got Mischief Mansion, which I've spoken about that video a couple of years, that attraction a couple of years ago, about maybe a refurbishment for that attraction, or maybe not being in the future plans. You've got other kids' rides, like the Balloon Ride, the Rotosaur, the Tractor Ride. You've got the former rocking tug known as Vortex near Hero. You've got the classic rides like your Frog Hopper, you've got your Heli Toys, you've got your Pedalos, you've got uh, the Jungle Carousel, you've got the Flying Clowns, the Crazy Combat Laser Battle Center, which is, I believe, still SBNO as far as I know. You've got the classic cable cars going through as well. You've got Cyclosaurus, you've got the Sand Play for the kids, the Playground for the kids. You've got all these different kids' attractions as well. So it's definitely uh, a park that's fun for all ages. 
Now to wrap up this preview, I'm gonna sum up my final thoughts and also what I'm looking forward to at most about this trip. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. That is everything you need to know about Flamingoland. Um, bit of history for those of you who don't know what it is and don't know much about it. Obviously, some very interesting facts there. Um, the fact that back in the 70s, you know, it was the first site in Europe to combine the zoo and the rides together in one location. You know, it's very cool facts, and I think that's something I'd like to see the park maybe build on in there when they're celebrating anniversaries and stuff like that. Um, now, obviously, the big, obviously, you know, the main highlight for this trip is to ride Sick, which is the brand new 10 looping relic coaster, the relocated 10 looping coaster. People are going to ask, is it the same as Colossus? It is not the same as Colossus. It is a slightly different model. I think it's more curved in, in some elements, and some elements are presented a bit differently. So it's, a, it's not too different to Colossus, but it is kind of a little bit. Um, but I would expect, but in terms of layout, it is a similar ride experience to Colossus in terms of the actual layout and the track pieces and where they are and, you know, the, the elements that are going to be in the ride. It's very similar to Colossus in that respect. Of course, if you don't know what Colossus is, it's uh, a coaster at Thorpe Park Resort. It opened back in 2002 uh, on the old Trappers Trail playground site in the now known Lost City area. Uh, built by Intamin and um, you know it's gonna be very very interesting to see this whole coaster you know I've been covering it for the last two three years on the channel um, I've done loads of videos on six so it's gonna be very very weird now stepping into Flamingo Land in a couple of days and just seeing this you know area seeing this whole new coaster you know and, and, and I said it at the time you know, it's weird that they only took out a few kids' rides and a cycle monorail for uh, for this new attraction. So it's going to be very, very exciting to see all of it happen. How does this restructure the park? How does it look different? It's very, very interesting to step into it for the first time since, you know, a few years ago. Literally, the, literally the last time I was did it was a, a school trip. It was back in 2015, I believe. 2015, 2016, one of those two. And... Wow, <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I mean, I'm probably, look, I'm looking at my shelf right now, I'm probably due for some new on-ride photos, so I might try and get one from the new ride, if they do, do them, comment down below if they do, um, but yeah, I'm literally, the main reason I'm there is to review the brand new ride, to review Sick, that's the reason why I'm there, to review the brand new ride, and also get back on some of the classics that I used to love, see if they're good, see if they've improved from their former selves you know anyone who's ridden hero comment down below is it got has it got any better since six years ago i really doubt it but you never know i'd like to be surprised um but no it's gonna be very very exciting it's gonna be a very hot day i think i mean unless i'm wrong i, I don't predict the weather but i i think it might be a hot day um but yeah hopefully fingers crossed traffic out of the way should be a nice get in there about half an hour before opening so uh, very excited about that but uh, yeah, very, very exciting, and I can't wait to vlog this trip. I'm trying to get the GoPro sorted, trying to find the harness. I can try and get some GoPro stuff for you guys as well. If not, then oh well. But I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm really, really looking forward to this trip. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this trip preview. I'll be back for the trip review either on the night or the day after the trip. Uh, but for now, I'm the C-H-A-L-L. Donks to born but built for theme parks. Keep living the coast life. And I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a flamingo-tastic day. Give us a like.